Well, you know, it begins in chapter five and verse five, where John hears about the lion from the tribe of Judah, the, the, the root of David, who has overcome, he's conquered. And, um, and then the next verse says, and I saw a lamb standing as having been slain. So what you have there actually is a pattern you have throughout the book of Revelation. You either have a statement interpreted by a vision or a vision interpreted by a statement. Here you have a statement interpreted by a vision. And uh, how did the, the line from the tribe of Judah overcome? He overcame through being slain yeah. as a lamb. And, um, <clears throat> and then uh, uh, not long after that, you get the vision of the fifth seal where it says uh, he saw saints who had been slain uh, because of the testimony of, of the Lord. Uh, so they're pictured actually as being conformed to their savior. They, they are experiencing um, a heavenly rain because it goes on and says, you know, that um, and, and then on in the chapter 20 in the millennium, I think that the uh, uh, first resurrection uh, are those who have died but been raised spiritually in a reigning with christ mm -hmm. and i think that's what that vision of the fifth seal pictures there so you have the again it's chapter 14 of verse 4 uh that they follow the lamb wherever he goes and that that following is what we talk about as a is a, is a cruciform life uh, now the irony is mirrored with evil as well in the book of revelation because in chapter 13 you have the dragon you have a beast and you have a, a second beast. Uh, you, you actually have a trinity there. And um, uh, and the second beast is like a, a lamb with horns. So so what, what, what happens is, is that the devil and, and his uh, earthly agents, which is what those beasts are, they're, they represent evil persecuting states because they come out of Daniel 7, and uh, take it from the beast there, which are persecuting nations. And so um, the, um, the devil, to be persuasive, presents himself as very attractive, not only as a trinity, but like Christ. And uh, in, chap in fact, chapter 13, I believe it's verse 4, says, who is like the beast? Right. And that, that comes right <laughs> out of Exodus 15. Counterfeits. Uh, who right. is like Yahweh? And in fact, I have a student doing a dissertation on the ironic use of the Old Testament in the book of Revelation. Oh, and let me know um, when it's done. If, and I'd love to read that. It's almost done. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but that's just sort of a tip of the, the iceberg. 666, I think, is uh, um, a symbolic number. Um, I think it has to be understood in light of the sevens throughout the book, which is a number of completeness, so that the um, 666 is uh, the number of incompleteness. It's appropriate for the beast, no matter how hard the beast and the forces of evil try to find their fulfillment, they never do. They're never satisfied. They mm -hmm. never find rest. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you could go on with uh, a billion sixes. It'll never hit seven. Um, in fact, when it says that it's the number of a man there, chapter 13, I believe verse 18, you, you could translate that it's the number of humanity, mm. unbelieving humanity who follow the beast. Um, they never find completeness, um, no matter how hard they may try and no matter yeah. how hard the forces of evil try to mimic uh, uh, God and Christ and the spirit. Um, that mimic uh, is hollow and empty and those yeah. who follow it will be hollow. We need the man of heaven. We need the life-giving spirit to get Amen. to seven. Yeah, that's right. 